Let's get some updates on the Salitre repairs. This is the kitchen after it's plastered. And I say plaster, it's not actually plaster, it's concrete mixed with latex sealer. And after it's uh, finished and textured like that, there's one more step. One takes a thing like this. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. And he scrapes the wall like this. And what that does is it makes it smooth before it's primered. Concrete mixed with latex sealer. We've gone from the exposed bricks to re-concreting the wall to primering it. Next is paint. Well, the dining room is pretty much finished. You remember that spot there? Before and after. And over here, that's all finished. And we've almost matched the paint there. It's not uh, perfect, but I think it is what it is for now. Juan is the cleanest painter I've ever worked with, and I'm including myself. And I used to paint in a three-piece suit, but that's another story. I used to work with his dad, Juan's dad, and I always had to clean up after him. But Juan, never a spot anywhere it shouldn't be. The purple wall has been plastered, primered, and one coat of new purple paint there, which is still just kind of like a primer coat. Um... We'll paint the whole wall before we're done in order that the new paint matches the old paint. Probably paint to the corner because for those of you who aren't painters, if you get to a corner, you don't have to worry about matching perfectly because the light is never the same on opposing walls or walls at a corner. It's progress. The house is still in disarray. Uh, here's a before and after of this spot over here. Looking good. Uh, the tower down there at the base is all finished. And in here, Oh, there was another spot up there. That needs a second coat of green. That wasn't salitre, it was just stained because I had a leak up there. And in here in the TV room, it's all primered. For primer, one uses um, flat white latex paint, and again, mixed with latex sealer. He calls it Fondo. There's your report on the Salitre repairs. Oh, see what's behind me there? All of those things? That's uh, pressed flowers that Lynn did. She did these a long time ago. They were kind of fading in color, but those are all natural flowers, uh, mostly from our yard. And it's something that kept her busy for a long time. And uh, she had them all in a book and I said, hey, why don't we hang them up? So that's that.
Here's another wall that's repaired, plastered, and primered, but I came over here to show you while I'm talking about pressed flowers. These are all um, real flowers also that Lynn pressed. And I made this frame for her. It was a day that we uh, took a drive. Oh, look at there, it's a reflection of outside toward the pool. A day that we took a drive off to the south of the lake into the El Tigre Mountains towards Mazamitla and off to the right towards hmm, Buenos Aires de something or other. Anyway, it's all the flowers that she collected in that one day trip. And again, that was several years ago, so they've really lost their color. Anyway, it was a pleasant thing for her to do, and the picture reminds us of the wonderful day we had that day. We actually followed a motorcycle group that day off into the mountains, and we were in our, years ago, and we still had our um, Suzuki sidekick down here in Mexico, so we had a four-wheel drive Jeep kind of thing to follow the motorcycles into the dirt roads of the El Tigre Mountains. Uh, I see the Guadalajara reporter down here. Oh, reading glasses. Yeah, good idea. Off. Very necessary this time of the year. And let's see what's going on in the paper today. This is my view from my desk. And as usual, I get ready to make a video. Somebody next door or in the neighborhood is running their lawnmower or their weed eater. I'm sure you can hear that. Ah, I closed, I closed the window. The weed eater shouldn't be too bad. Uh, the Guadalajara Reporter, Chapala government opens canine shelter. So, when we first moved to Mexico, uh, nearly 20 years ago, I can't wait till it's 20 years so I can quit saying nearly, and I'll just say 20 years ago or more. <laughs> anyway, it was uh, 2001 when we first uh, came down to Guadalajara. And uh, why don't I just tell you about that today? I don't got anything else to talk about. How did we come to go to uh, retire in Mexico? In 2001, um, after uh, owning a business that I had had for 27 years, uh, the contracts um, came to an end, and Lynn and I were uh, empty nesters, except that our son and his wife uh, were living with us. But essentially empty nesters, they weren't paying rent, but <laughs> they didn't have to live there. Anyway, we uh, decided that um, since we, I didn't have to work anymore, that uh, we'd do some traveling. So the first thing we did was we called some friends in California. We were living in Portland, Oregon at, uh, at that time. We called some friends in California and said, hey, let's go on a cruise. So we did the Western Caribbean cruise uh, to Jamaica and Grand Cayman and, and um, out of Fort Lauderdale to some special beach that uh, Princess Cruises had. And that was a wonderful uh, two week trip. And when we got back, I told Lynn I want to go to Guadalajara. Years ago, we had made the decision, actually we had let our kids make the decision. We had a motorhome, it was a 20 foot champion Excuse me, I have a fly problem. 
Now, if you've followed my videos for a while, you know that in the motorhome, I kill them and I count them. I don't count them here at home. But if that little sucker lands on me again, he's dead. Where was I? Oh, years ago, missed again. Years ago, we gave the kids a choice one time. In Portland, Oregon, we had this old champion motorhome. It was a 20-foot motorhome that my dad bought in 1972 when he retired. And so I'm talking about in the oh mid-80s. Uh, the kids wanted to um, take a vacation, so we gave them their choice. We'd either fly to Guadalajara and uh, spend some time exploring Guadalajara, or we would take that old motor home and a couple of their friends and go out to the Oregon coast and down into the Redwoods. Well, of course, the kids opted to uh, take their friends camping rather than all of us, the four of us, Lynn, I, Peter, and Becky, flying to Guadalajara. So we went camping. And I tell you that so that you understand why, after a whole bunch more years, I still wanted to go to Guadalajara. And then said, so well, why do you want to go to Guadalajara? I said, I don't really know. I think that um, when I was a little kid, I heard a song about it, like Guadalajara. And there's another one, Granada. We'd been to Granada, Spain, and that was my answer to her. I want to go because we've been to Granada, Spain, and I think those two places, Granada and Guadalajara, are just in my mind from when I was a child. So let's go to Guadalajara. So we came to Guadalajara, and it was going to be a three-week trip. We spent the first week staying in the Hotel San Francisco. Actually, that's not quite true. We spent the first night staying in the Hotel San Francisco in downtown Guadalajara in the historical district and uh, the Hotel Francis was booked at that time. We, that's where we wanted to stay. But uh, the manager played music until two o'clock in the morning in the lobby and our room had a balcony that overlooked his desk in the lobby the Hotel San Francisco. Tiny little hotel, real cute, but that didn't work for us that first night. So we took our suitcases and wheeled them up the street closer to Vallarta, Vallarta um, which is the main street that runs along the historical center in Guadalajara. And uh, went into a different hotel. It was a businessman's hotel, and it was much more pleasant. And we got up on the 11th floor, and it was a very pleasant stay. Anyway, so we were going to spend three weeks there. And a week there in the city. And we did, walking around the historical center of Guadalajara. And we kind of fell in love with that. Uh, that historical center goes from the cultural cabana all the way up towards uh, the university, and it's a walking mall built, who knows, as the, the largest pedestrian mall in Latin America. Um, lots of interesting things there, and um, if you want to search some of my old videos, you can go and Take a tour of it. Anyway, we spent a week there walking around and just fell in love with Guadalajara. But the plan was that we would then rent a car, which we did from Alamo Car Rental, and we were going to go off to Morelia and see the butterflies, and we we're going to go to San Miguel Allende, where a whole bunch of expats live, and we were going to go to Tequila and see the tequila factories. And uh, Lynn kind of fought with me about just, just let's go spend one night down there on Lake Chapala. And why was that? Well, because I heard about this place and I, 
uh, when I decided we were going to take a trip to Guadalajara, I started looking on the internet. Uh, I found out that uh, it seemed like there was a large contingent of expats, retirees, who lived down here on this place called Lake Chapala, in a little town called Chapala, and another one called Ahihik. So we came down here, we got our Alamo car rental, drove down here, and it was dark when we got here, and we went to the Posada Nueva, which is a very nice little boutique, boutique hotel here on the lake. And uh, there were no rooms available. So we went up the street and we talked to another guy. And uh, he said, a very nice uh, Mexican gentleman. Um, <laughs> he is now the owner of Cafe Grano. Anyway. Um, he said, uh, I have a room that's uh, in disrepair and I'm remodeling it and uh, if you don't find anything else, come back and I will set up a bed for you there. He said, but go to the top of Galeana to Casa de Abuela and check that out. So we went up there and uh, met Teresa, the abuela, the grandmother, Casa de Abuela. Got a room, it's dark, hadn't seen the lake really. Got up in the morning walked out on the balcony and went, whoa, <laughs> this is beautiful, this is amazing. And so we went and had some breakfast down at Salvador's, and uh, Salvador's is no longer there, but it was a, a restaurant that a lot of uh, um, uh, retirees, expats, he used to have breakfast at. And we met some people and that was interesting. And then we took some real estate tours that afternoon with uh, a couple named Joel and Sue who worked for Ahihik Realty. And uh, that evening, we were gonna, we were talking about, you know, we need to get going early in the morning. And I think it was Lynn that said, let's just stay here another day. Um, and I was happy with that. So we did, and after three days of waking up in the morning and coming out of the, on the balcony at Casa de Abuela, looking at the lake, we kind of decided that we were going to be back here. We could go to Morelia and see the butterflies and the San Miguel Allende and tequila, see the tequila factories some other time because we were going to come back here. So we just stayed there at Casa de Abuela for two weeks. Got to know Ahihik, met people that uh, we liked, and on the plane home we had this conversation. The conversation was, boy, I really like that place. And um, Let's come down for three months next winter. So, okay. And part of the conversation was, you know, we've lived in Portland, Oregon for 27 years, and we have a lot of very nice friends there. But the fact is that um, it's getting kind of boring. Not the friends necessarily, although in some cases that was true also. <laughs> but it's like, hey, we met a lot of people there. I can see myself... Uh, uh, hanging around there for a, 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 a long time. So that's what we did. We planned to come down for three months the next year. And um, that was in uh, January. So along about uh, middle of November the next year, I found that old... 1988 South Wind motorhome, 33 foot motorhome. And I went and told Lynn, I'm going to buy that and drive it to Mexico. And I've told this story before about how long it took me to talk her into that. She, uh, she said, No, that's just crazy. And um, 
I kept saying, well, hey, you know, it's not enough money that it's going to, you know, be a financial disaster if it breaks down and I have to park it alongside of the road. And you don't want to drive that to Mexico. And friends were telling me I was crazy. And finally, Lynn said something like, well, I think you're having a midlife crisis. I was uh, 55. <laughs> he says, I think you're having a midlife crisis, and if it doesn't have anything to do with a Corvette and a blonde, go get the damn thing. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> and the adventure started. That's enough of the story for now, and if you're interested, I'll tell you some more of the story. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I got for you today. We were talking about the uh, Guadalajara Reporter, and... I got sidetracked when I was talking about the canine shelter that the government in uh, Chapala opened up. And what I said was, 20 years ago when we first came to Mexico, we were kind of disappointed about the treatment of animals, uh, dogs, horses, cows, they just didn't enjoy very nice living conditions. And um, over the course of the last 20 years, we've been very uh, happy to see progress in Mexico and Mexican culture with regard to that particular issue. Um, so this is, uh, it reminds me of that. There have been protests against um, uh, poor living conditions for many, 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 like 20, 30 dogs in a particular house in Guadalajara a couple of three years ago, um, where people are just expressing their, um, their concern for the life of animals. And we have several uh, animal shelters around here. That particular article is about a new shelter that will be a living shelter rather than uh, how governments in the past have just had kill centers where you dropped off stray dogs. So that's progress. Another progress, um, and I don't know, this is like about three years ago now, Mexico passed a federal law that you can no longer have live animals in circuses. Uh, and consequently, you'll see, uh, <laughs> they used to, when a circus comes to town, two things happen. One is an airplane flies around with a big loudspeaker and a banner that trails behind the airplane. It's a little uh, Cessna 180, I think, or 150. And they announced that uh, it's the, oh, it's the, it's the last day to get a special ticket to go see the circus. The other thing that happens, and that, that plane flies around, flies around, flies around the whole time the circus is in town, and frankly, it's sometimes annoying. <laughs> the other thing that happens is that they used to haul around the animals on flatbed trailers. They'd have... Uh, uh, tigers and, and um, uh, uh, like a zebra and an, um, an elephant. So now what happens is uh, they haul around a flatbed trailer with fiberglass animals. <laughs> Progress. Progress in um, the livability of Mexico for animals. Did you get the job? The señora mañana va conmigo. Fui a mirar el trabajo. Ah, sí. Sí. ¿Cuándo termina aquí? Sí. Sí. Okay. Próximo semana. Posible la primera va con señora. Ajá. Uh -huh. Porque se me hace que señora en Estados Unidos. Oh, sí. Este. Este número es 
Cruz y uno. Cla Claudia Leva. ¿Es el dueño, dueño de casa? Es esposa del de señor. ¿O oh, oh, necesito hablar con él? ¿Con ella? Uh -huh. Ah, ¿ella habla español? Sí, el señor no. Me, ella sí, ella sí es español. ¿Cuándo uso esto? Uh -huh. es necesito 001 primero. Eh, 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 de muchacho ese teléfono dice nomás Cruz. Bueno, well, ese Cruz es, es, está bien, pero es, es, es más fácil. 001. Ok. If it's a problem, it's 001. Cuando yo habla. Sí. Ah, bueno. Ok. Deja apuntar. Thanks for watching today. If you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.